Hi, welcome to a little summer edition. We are going to talk about swipe detection on a next-gen display. So, as you can see, I'm uh, on vacation. I hope you're all having a great summer. Uh, at least I am. I'm in the north of Sweden at my brother's place and to my help I have my brother's daughter, my associate, my camera woman, Frederica. Say hello to the camera. Hello. <laughs> We're trying to be a bit efficient here, combining vacation and YouTubing. I want to put up some stuff on YouTube. I'm sure there's maybe a few of you waiting for my third episode about the NS panel ESB home tutorial thing. I don't have that much time now, so I'm, I'm not able to finish that one. But I want to do this small video about the swipe detection thing that I've just learned during the vacation. Anyway, so we're, we're shooting the intro here and now because we have a bit of time. And then when I'm at the computer, I will shoot the later part of the video. To the topic, we're going to talk about swipe detection on a next-gen display. I've been searching a bit because I wanted this as an upgrade to my panel. I want to be able to swipe down on my next-gen display to display a new page with some settings and I've searched and Google a bit didn't find that much information but I found some small example code in the home assistant form so that's what I based my swipe detection on the code that I found there was not really enough for me to get it working in a good way so I've changed it a bit modified it created my own thing so I want to show you that and hopefully you can get going with some swiping gestures on your next gen display as well the things we need to create this swipe detection is basically three things we need a touch cap timer that's the second thing pretty basic also a component in the next gen editor software the last thing that we need is something called tch 0 1 2 and 3 it's four variables that are automatically created in the next gen display when someone is touching the display tch 0 gives us X coordinate as soon as someone is touching the display and TCH1 stores a Y axis coordinate as soon as someone touches the display. For upwards and downward swipe we're using the Y coordinates so that's TCH1 that we're going to use in this video. Uh, TCH2 and 3 is just the last known X and Y coordinates when someone has touched and released so you can check where someone touched the panel when it was touched the, the, the last time. My camera woman is getting tired but that's the intro that's what we're gonna talk about see you at the computer I'm at the computer now I found some time it was just pouring down rain a couple of minutes ago so we set up to do some recording but now the Sun is shining again as you can see that's good so we have some light for the movie. I have my camera woman here beside me, of course. Let's go. I'm going to start by showing you the panel to see that it works. We're going to look at it in theory. And I've put out some lab components on the screen to see what calculations are actually done. And after that, we're going to look at the computer and go through the code, to see what I've done to make this work. Let's look at the screen. Okay, here it is. Here's just three lab components that I've used uh, while I was getting this to work. We'll just start with doing a downward swipe. Okay, you can see that it works. It changed page. Right now it just goes, goes to the settings page. Let's try again. Okay, swipe. Works pretty good, right? But what is actually happening? Look at me just pressing the screen. You can see in the top box, that we get a value and that's the TCH0 value. No, TCH1 value. You remember TCH0 is the X value when someone is pressing the screen from left zero to the right. It's like, I don't know, 300, 400 or something. Now we're doing downwards and upwards. So we're using the TCH1 value. That's the Y axis, top of the screen zero bottom of the screen like 350 or something. So if I press in the top of the screen, you see 64, 128, 217, goes higher, 
the further down I go. You can see that just milliseconds after a value appears in the first box, a value appears in the second box as well. And if we just press and hold it, we can see that it's always the same value in the first box as the second box, right? But if we swipe real fast, shoof, we can see that the first box got value three, it's on the top of the screen, and the next value is 157. It's like in the middle of the screen, all right? So somehow we're getting two values, one in the beginning of the swiping gesture and one in the middle or the end of the swiping gesture. So the thing that is actually happening is that when we touch the screen for the first time, a timer starts. That timer is right now on 100 milliseconds. After 100 milliseconds has passed, we pull the TSH variable one more time to see if someone is still touching the screen and we get a new value. What about the third box then? I'll do a swipe again, shoof, and we get two, 125. Now there's a calculation being made so we take the first variable, 2, minus the second variable, 125, and that gets us a negative value of 123. All right, that's the third box. Swiping upwards, shoof, gives us 316, that's in the bottom of the page, 200, a bit higher up, and that gives us 316 minus 200, that's 116. Okay, now we kind of know what's going on, uh, but I have made another page that's kind of in slow motion. On this page, uh, that is in more slow motion, I've set the timer to two seconds instead, just to see it a bit slower. So we have a first touch there, it's in 67, I move, 198. We'll do that again, so I'll just touch the screen, move my thumb, and after two seconds, Timer ends and checks if someone is still touching the screen. If someone is still touching the screen, we have a value on the TCH1 variable. If no one is touching the screen, the TCH0 and 1 variable is always 0. So that way we can know that no one is touching the screen. The important thing is that the timer ends when someone is still touching the screen. That's the important thing. So I've been playing around a bit with how long the timer should be and that depends on fast you want to swipe to detect uh, a swipe gesture. So if you have a timer on one second, you have to be a really slow swiper because otherwise you will have released the screen and there, there won't be a calculation, kind of. So yeah, you understand? We will look at the computer now and just go through the code. Hello. Hello. Look at the screen. What do we have here? This is the next gen editor. And to create this swipe detection, I use Touch cap, it's that one, a timer, and three variables called zero, one, and two. Let's start with the touch cap component. That's a great component. I use it for my screensaver functionality, for example. The good thing with the touch component is that it has a touch press and a touch release event, and it occurs every time someone touches the panel. It doesn't matter where on the screen you touch, the touch cap will register a touch press and a touch release event. So let's look at the code on the touch cap. On the touch press event, as soon as someone is starting the swipe, we set our variable VA1 to the value of TCH1. So where on the Y axle someone is touching the screen, that's what we're giving to our variable VA1. We also enable our timer components. So let's look at the timer component. It's not enabled from start, it's EN0. And the timer that we are enabling is on 100 milliseconds. That's what's happening on the touch press event. Uh, this is just lab stuff to fill these, these components. So don't, don't look at that. Let's look at the code for the timer. So when the timer ends, we check if TCH is not zero. So we want to know, is someone still touching the screen? If TCH is not zero, someone is still touching the screen because we know that TCH is zero when no one is touching the screen. So if that's the case, someone is still touching the screen, we want to get that 
second value for the second variable. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we set our VA2 variable to TCH1. TCH1 now has uh, an increased value, hopefully, if someone is swiping from the top and downwards. Yeah, so these two rows are also just lab stuff to fill these two components. That's it for the timer code. What we have left now is just a touch cap, touch release event. That's where the magic is happening. We can just look at these variables there's there's no code on these whatsoever let's look at the touch release event so as soon as someone releases the screen we start with unenabling the timer we also check the tch1 variable to see if it's zero meaning no one is touching the screen it's all always it's only if someone is not touching the screen that we want this code to run the next thing we're checking is if va2 has a value or not. If VA2 does not have a value, it means that someone has touched the screen and released before the timer ran out. So that could be just someone pressing the screen using buttons. Then we will not have a value on VA2. If we have a value on VA2, it means that someone has swiped, the timer has start and is still touching the screen when the 100 millisecond timer runs out. That means someone has been doing some swiping. If we have a value on VA2, we set our VA0 variable. This, this is the first time we're using it. So VA0 is the calculation that we're doing between VA1 and VA2. So we, we, we take VA1 minus VA2. And this gives us a value on how someone has traveled along the Y axis. If it's a big number, negative or positive, we know that the finger has traveled a long way from first touch on the screen till the, the timer ran out. If we're getting a negative number, it means someone has swiped from top downwards. If we get a positive number, it's an upward swipe. Here we're just checking how big the value is and this is a value that you, you have to play around with yourself to see what, what suits you. Uh, I've put the value pretty low which means that you don't have to swipe very far for the gesture to be considered as a swiping movement. But if, if, if you have a big value you have to swipe from top of the screen to the end of the screen basically. But yeah, I have, a, I have a small value and I think it works uh, really good. I haven't seen any situations where I, I haven't swiped, but it anyway thought that I swiped. Here you just put the code that you want to be executed on swipe. This is for up swipe and this is for down swipe. And after this is done, we make sure to clear the VA2 variable to zero. And this is lab stuff. Don't look at that. Setting the VA2 to zero again is just setting up for a new swipe detection next time someone is touching the screen. That's it. Nothing more than that. We'll just hit debug mode. We'll just look at the lab page here again. The slow motion. It's the, the timer is on two seconds now instead of, instead of 100 milliseconds. And we'll do some swiping gestures. Talk about the code. First touch on the screen. I press now. Touch cap press event is triggered. We're getting the TCH1 value, which is 22. Other thing that happens is that the timer starts on press event. Timer starts, I'll press again. Timer starts, we're getting 22. Timer ends, we get the next TCH1 value, which is 22 again, because I haven't moved my mouse anything all right do that again but i'll move the mouse touch move timer ends we get a new value the value is 184 because i moved the mouse next thing we see is a negative number there's calculation here but the calculation is not really made here it's just uh how i did the the lab page the calculation is actually done on the touch cap release event and it tells us if it's an upward or downward swipe movement if the value is not big enough 
it will not be counted as a swipe movement. So we'll just check that out. We'll do a swipe down. The value is minus 243. It's uh, smaller than minus 20. So therefore, it will be counted as a swipe down movement. Let's swipe upwards. The value is, the calculation gets us 275. It's bigger than 20, which was our value that we're checking for. It means it's an upward swipe. Just swipe even shorter like that. Okay, so now we got minus nine. It's not big enough or small enough. It has to be uh, minus 20 or lower. So that's a no swipe then. That's the same, and we can do that upwards as well. This is a super short one. The calculation gives us eight. It has to be 20 or bigger to be counted as an upward swipe. So there's no swipe detected there. Yeah, that's it. That's some swipe detection on a next gen display on a sunny day in northern Sweden. Hope you have a great summer. See you, talk to you soon. Just do some swiping here. Downward swipe, upward swipe, downward swipe, upward swipe. Okay, see you, bye, 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 bye.